Hello everybody, welcome back to a another video and in this video I'm showing you every single structure in Minecraft 1.20 That's over 40 different structures And so if you're looking for a specific structure I've divided this video up into chapters So you can skip right over to the part of the video of the structure you're interested in But let's get started with the structure we're in currently This is the ancient city structure, it was added in Minecraft 1.19 It is of course the home of the warden It is one of the largest underground structures in the game And it usually generates somewhere below a mountain area. If you want to know how to find this structure, I've made a video on it. Link is in the top right of your screen. But of course, it also contains a very nice secret room here below the portal with some redstone contraptions. And furthermore, this structure contains some amazing loot, such as the silence armor trim, the other side music disc, the five music disc fragments, echo shards, and of course, also the swift sneak enchantment. Then next, we have the buried treasure chest. This structure consists of just a single chest that can be found using a buried treasure map, and it always contains a heart of the sea, and it also always generates on the coordinates 9, 9 within the chunk it's generated in. The next underground structure you can find is the mineshaft. There are two different types. There's this regular mineshaft and also a Badlands or Mesa mineshaft, which we'll check out afterwards. These mineshafts contain minecarts with chests, with some nice loot, and furthermore, a whole lot of cobwebs and oak planks. And of course, they can contain areas just like this one, with lots of chains and hanging platforms, just like this. And they can also contain cave spider spawners, like this one over here, surrounded by a lot of cobwebs. And here's an example of one of those mesa mine shafts, which only generates inside of the Badlands biomes, like this one over here. And instead of regular oak, the entire structure is made up of dark oak. But for the rest, it contains all the same features as the regular mine shelf. Then if you've ever beaten Minecraft, they'll be very familiar with this next structure. It is the Stronghold, another underground structure, which contains the end portal, which brings you to the end dimension, if you fill it with Eyes of Ender, and a Silverfish spawner. Furthermore, it also contains these altar chests, which can contain ender pearls, and also it contains these libraries, where you can now find the eye armor trim in every single chest. And of course, you can find a Stronghold by throwing Eyes of Ender and following where they fly. And then the final underground structure actually bridges the gap between the underground and above ground, because it is the newly introduced trail ruin structure in Minecraft 1.20. Of course, I've removed all the stone here so you can take a better look at what it actually looks like. But what you would normally see is something like this over here, or like this, from the surface. And this structure actually contains suspicious gravel, which is this block over here, which you can use a brush on to get all different kinds of loot, including pottery shorts, armor trims, and also the relic music disc. And so this entire structure is filled with suspicious gravel for you to brush away. And there are some different variants as well. So here is a different trail ruin structure. And so usually it contains quite a lot of mud and bricks as well, and supposed to resemble a sort of broken down old village or ruin. But now indeed, let's head over to above ground and see what kind of structures we find over there. Starting with the desert pyramid, which is a structure that can generate inside of the desert biome. And inside you will find multiple different rooms. So the room below the desert pyramid has existed there since it was added into the game. And so if you go down here, you will find four chests containing some loot and a pressure plate on top of 9 TNT at the bottom. But as of Minecraft 1.20, a second room has been added to the desert pyramid. At the back over here below this sand is now a staircase. And so within this sand can also be found some suspicious sand, which you can brush away for pottery shards and other loot. And once you've brushed away and removed all the sand from this room, it looks something like this with another one of those patterns on the floor, just like in the center room of the desert pyramid. Then moving from the warm desert over to a cold snowy biome, we have the igloo structure. So the igloo is made of snow, contains a bed of furnace and a crafting table, but half of the igloos actually contain a secret basement as well, below the carpet. And in this basement you find a tutorial for converting zombie villagers into villagers, because there's a zombie villager, there's a chest with always a golden apple, and there's a brewing stand with a potion of weakness, all there so you can start the conversion process just like that, turning a zombie villager into a regular villager. The next we have the jungle pyramid, or jungle temple, which generates inside of the jungle biomes, and inside there are a couple of traps. So if you head down here and to the left, you will find some tripwire here and a dispenser trying to shoot us with some arrows. And there's another one right here as well. There's some mediocre loot in these chests. Sometimes it's not that mediocre. But of course, there's also the puzzle over here, which you can solve just like this. 
And then if we go back up here, we will open this room and there's another chest in here, which that's great loot. And on the second floor, there's pretty much nothing to be seen. Then the Woodland Mansion is one of the largest structures in the game. It generates inside of the dark forest biome and contains pillagers and evokers. And furthermore, the Woodland Mansion is a structure with the most secret rooms in the game, including this X room over here, for example. If you want to know about all secret rooms and structures, then I've made a video on it. Link is in the top right of your screen. So go check it out right after this video. Then staying on the topic of pillagers, there is also the pillager outpost structure, which contains this main tower and some side structures as well, which can contain both a lay or iron golems. The pillager outpost itself has a chest at the very top, which can contain items like crossbows or also armor trims. And there are also ominous banners hanging from the sides of the pillager outpost. The swamp pot is a smaller structure, generates inside of the swamp, and it also spawns in both a witch and a black cat, and you can make witch farms using this swamp hut. Then we have the village structure, one of the most common structures in the game. There are five different types of naturally generating villages. One of those is this desert village, which usually only generates inside of deserts, but here it's generated a little bit in the water, which makes it look quite nice. The desert village is special because a camel generates inside of it. So there's one right here. And it only happens inside of the desert village. And so the other four types of villages that generate are the plains village, the savannah village, the snowy village, and then also the taiga village. And so the taiga village is actually home to one of the rarest items in Minecraft, which is the large fern. The Tiger Village is the only way to obtain this super rare item. If you want to know about the other rarest items in Minecraft, then check out the video I've made on it. Link is in the top right of your screen. Next, let's go underwater with, first of all, the Ocean Monument, another very, very large structure in Minecraft, which contains three Elder Guardians. One, uh, two, and three. These other guardians, of course, can give you the mining fatigue effect, but also drop the tight armor trim. And there's also a special room inside of the ocean monument, which is this one right here, which contains no less than eight gold blocks in the center of this structure. Moving on from the ocean monument over to the ocean ruin. Ocean ruins are structures that generate in the oceans. There are two different types. There's cold ocean ruins and warm ocean ruins. Of course, the cold ocean ruins spawn in the cold oceans and the warm ocean ruins in the warm oceans. The cold ocean ruins contain suspicious gravel, which you can brush away for loot. And there's also the occasional chest as well. And they also summon in with drowned, who could attack you with their tridents if they have any. And then there's also the warm ocean ruins, which generate in with suspicious sand. And it can actually contain a sniffer egg in one of those suspicious sands. So this is the place to go if you want to obtain a sniffer in your world. And the final underwater structure is, of course, the shipwreck. There are all different types of shipwrecks, different types of wood, different orientations, different states of decay. But if they are still complete, they contain three different chests. The one in the middle always contains a buried treasure map. The one in the back always contains some really good loot, including iron, diamonds, and more. And the one at the front usually contains some food coal and or leather. But this is not the only major type of shipwreck. There's also a different one which brings us back above water because they are the beach shipwrecks. These are usually exposed above water or above ground but can also be quite buried under the sand of a beach. But for the rest they are pretty much the same as regular shipwrecks containing the same three chests and also being able to consist of all different types of wood and different states of decay. So I might have lied when I said that there were no more underwater structures. There's of course also the underwater ruin portal. And this is one of the most versatile structures in the game, the ruin portal itself, because not only does it generate here underwater, but it generates in a whole lot of different places as well. So it mainly consists of a broken portal, usually one or two gold blocks, and also a chest with some related loot as well, along with quite a bit of netherrack if it generates in the overworld. And so apart from being able to generate underwater, in the overworld, the ruined portal can also generate in the desert biome, in this case inside of a desert village. But you can see it also can generate underground, because here it is partially underground. Then there is also the jungle ruined portal. And as you can see, all of these different ruined portals have different sizes as well. That is quite random. This one is quite large, actually. And this actually isn't a jungle ruined portal, but a mountain ruined portal. They are all quite similar, but they are different if you use locate or place commands. And then the final overworld ruined portal is the swamp ruined portal. In this case, it's actually generated inside of a mangrove swamp instead of a regular swamp. But the ruined portal doesn't only generate inside of the overworld, it also generates on the other side in the nether. And so here you can see it's made up of blackstone instead of stone bricks. And there's also quite a lot of lava below. And that is, of course, not the only structure that generates inside of the nether. 
We also have the Bastion Remnant with four different types. The Housing Bastion, the Treasure Bastion, the Stable Bastion and the Bridge Bastion. This over here is a Treasure Bastion which probably is the best one for loot because it contains a Magma Cube spawner a whole lot of gold blocks and a chest which is guaranteed to have the netherite upgrade smithing template and could also contain some netherite as well. Then we also have the nether fortress structure which contains a whole lot of nether brick and can contain up to two of these blaze spawners which of course can be turned into blaze farms. These fortresses consist of both an outside part and an inside part as well, where the inside part looks something like this and contains these chests in the corners, which can contain the rip armor trim. And the final structures inside of the nether are these nether fossils, which consist of just bone blocks and generate inside of the soul sand valleys. And there's again many different types of these nether fossils. And then we move on to the end dimension for the final structure, which is the end city. So there is this part of the end city which you can climb up which contains a whole lot of shulkers but also some amazing loot at the top of these structures and about half of these end cities actually contain an end city ship which has another two chests with great loot and of course the elytra which you can use to fly in the game and so here is some of the loot you can find inside of these end cities but of course there is also another unique item here which is the ender dragon head at the front of the end city ship now we've made it through all the official structures in the game you might be wondering where Wait, what about this structure? Well, let's cover some of the features in the game which could be considered as structures, even though they're not listed as such in the code. And there's quite a lot of them here in the end, actually. One of those is the end gateway, which you use to both get over to the outer end islands by throwing an ender pearl inside of it, or to go back by, again, throwing an ender pearl inside of one of these end gateways you find in the outer end islands. There is also, of course, the end podium made up of bedrock and four torches which is the portal that brings you back out of the end once you kill the ender dragon. And once you do that, it of course summons in the portal and this dragon egg at the top. And it's also used to re-summon the ender dragon by placing four end crystals on the end podium. Of course, there are also these end spikes or obsidian pillars with the end crystals on top, which heal the ender dragon. And some of them can contain these iron bar cages. And finally, there is also this obsidian platform, which is generated each time you enter the end. Just 25 pieces of obsidian. Obsidian. Then back in the overworld, there is of course also the desert well, which can generate in the desert biome and contains some water, and as of 1.20 also some suspicious sand at the bottom there, which has unique pottery shirts. And if we move back underground, there is of course also the amethyst geodes, which consists of a layer of smooth basalt, then calcite and then amethyst, and of course can grow these amethyst clusters on the budding amethyst. And of course you can't go into an amethyst without doing this. Then we also have the fossil, which generates in both the swamp and desert biomes. Now there's two different variants of the fossil if it generates above the deep slate layer. It generates with coal ore, as you can see here. But there's also many different types of fossil as well. Different shapes and different sizes. But the second main category of fossil doesn't generate with coal ore, but instead... It actually generates with deep slate diamond ore. You can see an example right over here with diamond ore instead of part of the bones. And so this is the version that generates below the deep slate level. And it might actually be one of the rarest structures in the game, even though it's not officially considered as a structure. And so then let's move over to the final structure, which is the dungeon. Here it is. Yep. It's not officially considered as a structure, but as a feature, it is the old dungeon or monster spawner room. It can contain a zombie spawner, skeleton spawner, or a spider spawner, and can contain up to two loot chests, like these ones over here. The floor is made of mossy and regular cobblestone, and the walls are made of cobblestone. And so there we go, those are all the structures in Minecraft 1.20. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe!